Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is gonna be a really, really quick video on why I will not be uploading a regular video on today. I'm recording this on Thursday, but y'all gonna see it today. It's Friday. Cause y'all know my upload schedule is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So on the video that I released on Wednesday, I think it was, yeah, Wednesday, I told you all that I end up having to go to the ER. I'm just going to cut to the chase because I don't want this video to be too long. I need to go to bed. I don't feel well. I know I look like I do, but I don't. I am in pain right now and I don't want this video to be long because I don't want to have to do no editing. So I'm going to get straight to the point. Yeah, so, but anyway, yeah, like I was telling y'all in the video on Wednesday, I end up having to go to the ER on Monday, and then they gave me a referral to go to the doctor that Wednesday, um, which is the same day that I uploaded the video. So, anyway, I make it to that appointment, and um, come to find out, they found something on my cervix or in my cervix. I think I told y'all that already. I don't know if I told y'all that already, but anyway, I'm going to tell y'all again, just in case I didn't. I can't remember what I said in that video. But anyway, yeah, they found something that they are calling a polyp, polyp, polyp. Yeah, they found something called a polyp in my cervix and it needs to be removed. Now, they usually can do the procedure in the office, but in my case, they said I, I can't um, have mine removed in the office. I have to have surgery because my polyp have a stalk on it. I don't know what a stalk is. I Googled it. I didn't really feel like reading it or whatever because I was kind of, uh, first let me just let me tell y'all this. Like, I'm not going to even lie. At first I was really, really scared. You know, anytime anything dealing with your ovaries, your service, you know, you just, sometimes you just think the worst, you know, even though I was thinking the worst, I was still speaking life and I was still thanking God for my healing and all of that. You know, I was just scared. I'm not going to even lie. But anyway, um, mine has a stalk on it and from what I'm understanding, the stalk is attached up in there. So, which means they just can't go in and pop. They got these, um, I'm just going to call it a tweezer. Uh, they have a tweezer that they can just pull it on off. But because mine have this stalk, almost like how um, uh, plants have roots on them. Yeah, basically a root on it and you just can't pull it off. And she said she don't want to be pulling on nothing if it's attached to something and, you know, make, you know, all things worse. So, anyway... Um, make a long story short, I have to have surgery. They did the ultrasound of my, um, they did it on my stomach and then they went up inside of me with that wine or whatever. And anyway, make a long story short, um, my ovaries look good. Everything looks good in there. She even said that she is 100% sure that, um, no. She said in most cases, these polyps are always, always benign. It was a big relief for me to hear her say that. Um, because like I said, I was just so scared, you know, to even go to the doctor in the first place. Like I've been dealing with the pain since like 2014, but it kind of, I kind of adapt to it. So, you know, I was kind of overlooking it, but then as time was going on, it was getting worse. And I just had to go to the emergency room, y'all, because I just couldn't take it anymore. And like I was saying, it's giving me abnormal bleeding and, um, I don't know, you know, I Googled this thing and the symptoms that I am having, like, they, they saying that this thing don't bring this type of symptom, only the bleeding. And um, nine times out of ten, they saying most women don't even have any symptoms unless it's being disturbed by having sex or whatever. And, um, yeah, you know, I've been, but anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, so mine have got disturbed and, you know, that's what caused it to start bleeding or whatever. But anyway, yeah, like I said, I have to have the surgery on January the 18th. Um, they're going to go in. They're going to put me to sleep, of course, which I'm almost glad because I am the type of person I cannot stand pain. No type of pain. I couldn't stand the pap smear. My friend was there with me and like literally I was freaking out because I just, I can't stand pain. And I just kept asking the doctor, is it over yet? Is it over yet? I really wasn't feeling pain, but the fear of pain had me having anxiety. I was just having anxiety. And so when she told me that they can't do it in the office, I was almost relieved because I was like, I'm not going to be able to make it through this. And um, I'm pretty sure I may not even even went to even have it to be removed if I knew that um, I had to be woke for this thing because pain is just, 
I just can't take it. I just can't take pain. I do know some people that have a high tolerance of pain, but I just can't deal at all when it comes to pain, honey. I'm sorry, I just can't. So, but anyway, I'm feeling relieved that um, she's almost certain that this is not cancerous and you know, it's benign or whatever. I am so relieved. I am still thanking God for my healing. Even though I'm going through what I'm going through, I am still grateful, you know what I mean? So y'all, I don't know if any of you all that's watching this video, if you're anything like me, I hate doctors, I hate the outcome, I hate news, I hate diagnosis, and you know, I know we need to go, but if you, anything like me that just will not go, I am encouraging you all to go to your doctor, get your uh, yearly checkups, your uh, yearly mammograms if you are of age. Make sure you just check any side of pain, anything that's just not right, anything that's abnormal. You want to make sure you get yourself in the doctor because things like this if i hadn't had the bleeding i wouldn't have never known it was there even though she said nine times out of ten is benign but if the thing about it is not going to the doctor you never know even though i've been to the doctor a thousand times in 2018 for this same problem and they can never find anything and that's what i don't like that's why i'm glad i had the problem with the abnormal bleeding because you know these doctors sometimes they will misdiagnose you and you'll be all messed up and then when you're looking up it's like too late you know they found it too late so but anyway my point to you all is you know no matter what go to the doctor make sure you get your regular um pap smear your yearly pap smear your uh well woman exam i don't know what y'all want to call it i don't know what they call it but all i'm saying is just make sure you get yourself checked out because uh yeah don't walk around like me in pain but anyway uh mm -hmm. Because y'all, I'm telling you, life is just too short and we cannot take it for granted. We cannot walk around with this will never happen to me. We just can't have that type of attitude. And sometimes we do develop that attitude as it won't happen to me. Because as we all know, we all have, have an aspiration day. We all have to leave this place called world one day. So while we're here, we still need to take care of our, ourselves. So I'm encouraging you all to go to the doctor. And um, oh, y'all yeah, just don't know. Like I know I'm all over the place with this this thing because it is a feeling i am at peace right now i like the peace and quiet of my life right now for the most part like i am at peace and so i am glad that i'm able to i was able to even go to the doctor actually my friend encouraged me to go i was just taking the pain and she was like no you going you're going and you know we ended up there and i'm glad i did in my mind because i felt like i was in peace i felt like this was going to disturb my life and that's why i didn't want to go to the doctor and um, you know, hear anything, whether it was good or bad. I didn't know what I was going to hear, and I just felt like hearing something bad. It was just going to disrupt my life, and I didn't want to do that because right now I am living my best life, y'all. Because I have peace. I am at peace. I love the, the peace in my home, the serenity that I now have. I feel like I can take a deep breath, y'all. I haven't felt in peace in a long, long time. And um, having this problem scared me to death. Like, I just couldn't deal. I couldn't really function all of last week. And, you know, actually since the third, because this is when it started happening on the third. Like, I've just, my mind has just been all over the place. Yeah. And like I said, I've just had been in peace. I've been, you know, I've just been chilling, you know. Like, I go to work. I clean up my home. I play with my daughter. I love all my children. Like, I'm smiling. I have a smile on my heart. And, like, I am just at peace right now. And, um, yeah, I'm just at peace. So, this stuff, it, it, it scared me. So, but anyway... Um, I am still soliciting you all's prayer even though you know I have a good report on what's going on down there I still want you all to lift me up as I lift you all up every day I know y'all don't believe it I pray for those that I don't know I pray for all of my subscribers I just pray, I'm always praying for other people and this thing here all of my life I feel like I was giving out so much but in return I wasn't getting get anything because all my life all my life as a mother you know i've been dealing with sickness with my son and then also dealing with sickness as a daughter with my mom like i had, i never had the time to slow down to really take care of myself you know i was still taking care of myself for as you know being a woman getting those well woman checks because back in the day 2000 i had to have a a copo coco po 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 coco what is it called 
I don't know, the procedure was a leak procedure. I had an abnormal pap smear back in the day when I went to go get my uh, six weeks checkup after I had my son and they found some cancerous cells on my cervix then. So back in the day, back in 2000, I had to get, you know, um, half of my cervix cut off. And, um, and, and she had told me that I would never really have any more kids every time I got pregnant, that I would have a miscarriage, which I did. I had like two or three of them after the procedure, but somewhere in there, God was like, you know, I'm going to close your womb up so I can give you this daughter that you've been wanting so bad. And he blessed me with princess. Like he trusted me enough to bring me princess and I was able to have princess. So, but anyway, that diagnosis there scared me to death. Like, um, she had me coming back and forth to the doctor every two months and stuff and I finally got over that hump and I was like thank you Jesus I don't have never have to go through this but to come back here 2017 was well, actually 2014 is actually when it started and I ignored it because I was scared I didn't want to hear the word cancerous anymore I didn't want to hear cancerous cells I didn't want to hear anything so I avoided the doctors at all costs so make sure you get yourself and the doctor because if you want to continue to live your best life or you want to continue to show up like I do every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for y'all, I show up. You got to take care of yourself and um, I'm preaching to myself. Yes, I'm preaching to myself because I need to show up. I need to continue to show up for you all. I need to continue to be here for my daughter. I just need to continue just to be here because I have a lot to do. I have a lot to do. I'm trying to get my corn. I'm trying to turn my corn into a buck. Yeah, I, I, I got to do this y'all. I got stuff to do. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I don't even know where this video is going. I just wanted to let y'all know what was going on that, um, I will not be editing no video because I promise y'all I muster up enough to get this part of this video out for you all because y'all I'm telling you once I'm done here, I'm going to go to bed because I really do not feel good today. It was hard for me to finish my work day today it was just horrible today with the pain and stuff and they told me that I can't take any ibuprofen for eight eight days prior to surgery like and that's how I've been getting my life I've been taking the ibuprofen and it's been getting me through my day you know what I mean at least my work day and I can, I can get home get in the bed and lay down and rest now she's telling me I can't take the ibuprofen so I'm like dang what I'm gonna do and so um she was like the only thing you could do is just take Tylenol and I'm like well okay and of course, you know, all the instructions they gave me, of course, I can't eat nothing after midnight, which I don't have a problem with that anyway. I barely eat anyway. And um, so that's no problem for me. So, but yeah, I ain't really talking about nothing. I'm not. I'm not talking about nothing. I just wanted to make this quick video, at least get a video out to you all today, which is Friday. And like I said, I'm not having a surgery until the 18th. So if I feel well enough over the weekend, I will edit it and get videos out all the next week. I do have enough footage for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I don't know. It all depends on how I feel, guys. I'm not going to front. Can't front no more. I can't keep going on like I feel well. And that's the whole problem of my whole entire life. You know, I've always hid my feelings, hid my hurt, my pain, and I, I just can't do it no more. You know, I got to take care of myself. I do. I, I got to take care of myself. So I continue to just show up, you know, not only for the camera, just, just show up no matter where I need to be, work, the grocery store, shopping. I don't know how I'm good somewhere. I don't know. I just need to continue to show up. So, but anyway, yeah, I want to continue to live my best life. So I'm going to make sure I take care of myself. I'm going to make sure, um... I'm good. I gotta, I gotta do it. So yeah, I wanted you all to know where I was at. If you don't see a video from me, just know I'm somewhere laying down and trying to get myself together, get myself healed. I don't know how long the surgery will be. I forgot to ask that question. They said take uh, two weeks to heal. She told me today, but I can go back to work sooner than the two weeks if that makes sense you know like she don't want me to do nothing that day or either the next day and then after that I can't lift nothing over a certain I can't remember girl I was all over the place when this woman called me I was at work in the middle of working when she called I'll get all the details later but um she did say it takes about two weeks to heal from this so if you don't see a video just know I'm um, somewhere healing somewhere asleep somewhere laying down and if you do see a video just know I'm still doing the same thing. And I will let y'all know when I'm back to my normal self, y'all. So like I said, I ain't talking about nothing. So I'll catch y'all when I turn this camera back on. So until next time, until the next video, bye-bye. I love all of y'all on purpose.